отлично. Мы начинаем или мы ждем? Да, все окей. Окей, shall we start? Hello everyone. We'll spend this hour talking about bulletproof hostings. So they also called uh, abuse resistant hostings, but uh, first of all, a few words about myself. I'm a, a fact expert, cybercrime investigator. For more than five years I've dealt with cybercrime investigations around the globe. I'm also an OSINT enthusiast. I'm uh, in the community. I often speak at uh, conferences and I also have resident uh, investigation courses and I have a number of Telegram channels. Okay, what are we going to be talking about? Let's talk about some historical background about this bulletproof hostings and how they have evolved, what they are based on, how they're built, uh, who uses them and how to investigate bulletproof hosting related investigations. Okay, what has brought us all together? Why do we need all this stuff? We know how to detect a proxy, we have some public lists, we can block them, we have the same with VPN, we can have a look at the IP address, whether it's related to VPN or not. And the same works for Tor. There are public lists of nodes of Tor, and that's more or less straightforward. Okay. For bulletproof hostings, a few people know how to detect it, how to deal with them, how to investigate um, incidents related to these bulletproof hostings. Okay, some background. What brought these uh, bulletproof hostings around? 30 years ago, in the 1990s, the Internet was growing rapidly. There were more and more users joining from a few million to a billion. The number of cyber crime was rising, like Trojans. So you remember how it all started, don't you? And there were more and more companies dealing with cyber security. Okay, that's how the shield and sword story began. Okay. Let's uh, have a look from the defender's perspective. What are the measures they had to take to defend their facilities? And the international community also had to interact to be more effective in fighting cybercrime. Okay, what were the decisions taken? They established the so-called uh, abuse services, those who dealt with campaign, complaints on hostings and registration of domains. They also established the CERT organizations and spam houses were also established. Okay, let's talk about the abuse service. What they do is consider complaints on various services. These complaints can come from law enforcement, from sorts, from commercial organizations who deal with uh, cybersecurity, and also from various uh, IP rights holders. But these services uh, deal with the external world in an unregulated environment. Okay. Here is what happens when there is a complaint filed to the abuse service. There are three ways to go here. Number one, to notify the client who has violated some rules to support the one sending the complaint with some information or technical support and to block the service violating rules. This can be done well, in any combination thereof. In Russia, if uh, there is a complaint against you, your passport data can be asked for, and if you don't provide the data, then your domain or hosting can be blocked. Okay, what do the attackers think about this, the threat agents? So they need to somehow deal with these complaints to reject them or to control them. They also need to stay anonymous to avoid 
ID. They should also support the uptime of their services so that they don't get blocked. So they want to share samples of uh, malware, to have uptime of landings and phishings. So what do they do for this? There are three ways for them to go. Number one, offshores. So they put their services in the countries where, well, it's really difficult to make out. So in the countries where, say, it's really difficult to engage with law enforcement. So cybersecurity is uh, quite undeveloped there. Or else they put their servers in the adversary countries. So if you want to deal with RU, uh, you should uh, have your server service in the United States. An example of this bulletproof housing is Heaven & Co. It uh, was located in sea land, which is unrecognized. This, it is uh, located on a military sea platform. And one person decided to take hold of it. So he called himself the monarch of the state and he sold this area for hosting. In uh, the year 2000, this hosting was established and in 2008 it ceased to exist. So there you could place anything apart from spam, uh, hacking utilities or porn or any sort of it. Bulletproof hostings were also impacted by the development of reselling. What is it? When the panels for web hosting control appeared, you could uh, sub-rent the server capacity. So you could split the server into several hostings or sub-rent a, a server. And this way we have three layers. A client, who is the end user, of the hosting, we have the reseller uh, who sub uh, rents the server and the owner of the physical capacity. And the reseller here bears the responsibility of the anonym anonymity because uh, every complaint uh, will result in some questions asked of this reseller. Okay, let's talk about uptime as blockages still go on, they are still an important thing for hackers. What can we do in this case? So, the threat actors uh, want their own hosting, the dark hosting. Okay, let's see how it goes. Stage one, resell. So the lowest level, when they resell some root service, primarily RDP, then they resell capacity. This is quite cheap and affordable for many. But this is not reliable because they are still blocking you. Stage two. You have some add-ons to resell some services like registering domains or your own DNS servers or those who sell the service or fast flux. This becomes more reliable but this is still complicated in terms of support. Okay, what is fast flux? This is related to hostings too. Say you have a client, say your computer, you want to connect to a band site, or maybe a computer infected with malware and it wants to, to go to the CC server. So what do you want? Okay. We want to go to example.com. So we go to the Anna server in the fast flux. This server has uh, the air records which are updated quite often, once a day or several times a day. And uh, the threat agent can uh, update these uh, records. So this way they get an IP address they can use to connect and they connect to the fast flux uh, agent in the network. This way, the whole thing 
lets your server or resource to have the longest uptime. They're changing IP addresses continuously, and if you block one agent, another agent, but you can have in botnet millions of these agents, or even more. And the third stage, the former resellers, uh, they can uh, rent uh, ISs or subnets. So a legal or non-legal hosting can buy a small subnet from a company, which is also headquartered offshore, and it can be identified as an offshore organization in the Caribbean in this case. And you should be careful here. This is even more reliable, but uh, there is an issue here because here you depend on these organizations who give you IP addresses. And stage four would be the full-fledged uh, bulletproof hosting with its own uh, physical infrastructure on a platform uh, well, in the basement, they have their own automation, their own billing, their own website, and their sophisticated routing. So here you can see a screenshot. So this is uh, one of the owners of a popular Bulletproof hosting owner. So this is Mikhail Rutikov. He is the owner of Webhost, and he is uh, uh, better known as Abdullah. Another example of this uh, Bulletproof hosting is the Cyber Bunker quite well known. This is a bunker indeed, built in the Netherlands by the NATO countries. And one of this decided to buy this bunker as a place and he put there the cyber office. But following a fire, they had to call firefighters and a lot of uh, illegal stuff was found there, a drug lab and many other things. So this cyber bunker was uh, busted. So you can, we could put there everything apart from child pornography or extremist materials. Okay, let's talk about bulletproof hostings as a service. Here you can see a screenshot from one of the forums. Initially, this was advertised um, on various uh, hacker forums. They are still doing this. And this is uh, a recent screenshot, as you can see. Here, you see these services provided, like uh, anti-bot, uh, protection uh, welfare, uh, recapture, and so on. And uh, you can see that you all can only talk through Telegram or Google Talks. Bulletproof hostings are developing, threat actors are developing, they are building their own websites. As you can see here in this uh, ad, you can see what you can place in the hosting. So they don't take uh, logs, so you can have uh, botnets, uh, scan of portals, uh, gambling, and so on. So some prices are shown here. You can see where the servers are located in Belgium, in Poland, in the Seychelles, and soon in Malta. Okay, let's talk about prices. How much is it? Okay, bulletproof RDP costs about 10 to 20 dollars. VPS and DEDIC are a little bit more expensive, 15 to 100 dollars. But depending on reliability, uh, prices can differ. They can be extremely expensive. Domains. This depends on the domain zone and domains are often provided for free if you buy some servers. Passflux and uh, DNS servers, they are much more expensive, up to $300, and support usually comes uh, free and continuously. Well, who doesn't use bulletproof hostings? Number one, the newbies, those who just need to learn things. They don't have this need to use these hostings. Lazy and poor guys don't use them either. For them, a free Cloudflare is easier. Some other people don't use it. Those who are quite skillful, uh, they can uh, set up the infrastructure on their own. So they don't necessarily need hostings. And treffers don't use it either, if not farmer, because treffers don't really care about uptime. 
a few words about fishing. Fishing is not uh, a client for them. Name cheap can be used. Who uses this? Well, it could be illegal porno or just porno, some pirate content. So they want to be resilient, as spammers. So your email, so all of this uh, is located there. Scammers, including crypto and hype schemes, casinos and gambling agencies, botnets, malware, ransomware, sharing the samples. It's also former and uh, hacktivists. They're also hiding in abuse resistant or proof postings. Investigations. How can we deal with all this, with those who are using bulletproof hostings? So what can you do here? How can you solve the problem? Okay, a how-to. How can you investigate incidents if you have seen a bulletproof hosting? How to see that it is a bulletproof hosting? You can see only the IP. You don't know what it is. You don't know whom it belongs to. Okay, to begin with, you should have a look at the who is using the IP or IS or you can have a look at the DNS the IP has you can have a look at the PDP and you can identify the infrastructure to see what is related and not related to it and then you can follow the digital footprint of the threat actor sometimes it's much more straightforward sometimes you should just Google the AS and the title of the company this IP has and somewhere in Twitter you can see that it is a bulletproof hosting. If it doesn't work like that you can see who is. Quite often so that uh, they don't run their own uh, post server they leave email addresses with the usual public domains like Mail.ru Yandex and so on. This can be suspicious, but this is not always evidence that this is bulletproof hosting. You can use at the look at the BGP, which is crucial in investigations. So you should see what is uh, related to the ASs, related to the IPs. One incident: the IP address 185.213. So it was in the incident with malware, and here you can see cobble strike spreading. We faced this incident and we decided to see the servers used to spread this malware. Here you can see the company who has the AS, okay, Elite Team. What kind of team is it? So this is a company registered uh, on Seychelles. They don't have any phone number, and the email there is uh, on their own domain. Okay, they have three AS. Uh, the common one is uh, 538381. They use it to spread malware and other bad things. Okay, if you use AS for who is 51381, you can see that the company is on Seychelles, no phone number. And an interesting remark here, they say that they are non-spam and if you see this, uh, please uh, uh, send this to uh, information to the email address. So if you send something to a different address, we will not respond to you. So maybe this is a loophole, like they are not considering abuse cases, or maybe they will respond to you formally. Okay. Our AS51381. So in the peers you have the DDoS guard, but this is now. And when we investigated the incident, they the had a com company called uh, Raid Telecom. If you look at uh, their AS54, you can see it is disconnected from global uh, routing and it's not uh, connected to the internet. What happened on the 5th of September 2022? 
Okay, let's have a look at some history data on this uh, AS. In plain text, we can see the name and surname and the pantonymic of the owner of the address, the phone number, some uh, website, Red Telecom. Dot IU. So it doesn't look suspicious. Okay, we can find the like, liability company registered uh, with the same person in 2014. It is uh, still operating, but it doesn't have any turnover, so they don't pay any taxes started with 2017. Why so? Well, you can uh, search the web and see that this uh, domain was blocked by uh, Leos and the AS uh, was disconnected from global routing. Okay, so we have the red actor uh, renting subnet 185, which is in AS81, uh, owned by the elite team company. This uh, AS is connected to AS54, owned by a person whose organization doesn't uh, operate, so they are not doing any business. This way we can conclude, and this was uh, later confirmed, that uh, Elite Team is uh, more likely to be a bulletproof hosting. Here is another example, pretty fresh. Uh, they were spreading Android uh, malware from this IP address, 6273. So Varys Total says, it's fine, it's great, and uh, this IP address is uh, in IS-125, uh, owned by Horizon LLC company. Looking at uh, who is for this IS, so we can see we have some contacts for abuse report, and uh, so have a look at the dates, uh, October 2021. So if you look at Horizon LLC, so we can see the address and uh, phone number, well, a different email, by the way, but we'll discuss it later. If we go to the website of the company, we can see the domain is registered, but uh, there is nothing there. So this is um, a red flag, something is amiss. Okay, let's have a look at the LLC, having the same address as we have in uh, who is. So this is Office 2, and there we see the registration date one month before the AS was organized. Well, this is uh, not really nice, is it? And the most important thing is that uh, what they do is uh, sell uh, wood uh, materials. So why do they need an AS? Okay, let's see what we have next. In this AS, they have only one peer, 9002, for a legal communication provider company. Okay, here you can see a screenshot from our system, Threat Intelligence. So what can we see? So our domain, Horizon LLC, uh, next to the hostway.ru domain, and this domain is with the IP address 45100, which uh, through the SSL is connected to the domain tunahost.ru. Let's have a look at that in more detail. Um, Hostway.ru, this is AP address. And what Tuna Host is about? It turned out that it is enough to Google that in order to see an advertisement that Tuna Host really is abuse resistant hosting. But not the end of the story. Here, you can see a panoply of uh, looking alike domains. Horizon LC which we already discussed, the Kisara LLC, Genero LLC, so let's have a look at one of them, and others look very similarly. Similarly. It really has an AS, it also has an address and a phone number, and a mail address. It looks very much like what I told you about, but you may actually suspect that this is a legal company which all of a sudden was included into the suspicious list but it has a uh, with the same num name with the same address and also it is uh, trading in timber 
What conclusion we may make? So these are several uh, actually um, joint ventures which uh, have the same hosting. If you block these IS and these tuna hosts, you may find the owners. So some tips uh, in order to investigate into the incidences, first of all. It doesn't make sense to ask for hosting. Uh, either would they would not respond to you or they would uh, send to you some gibberish. If you require certain data from them and um, thinking that these are the resellers or anything like that, most likely they would find out that you are doing an investigation regarding their activity. And uh, this is how you may scare them. And uh, you have to send an appropriate uh, request uh, directly to the original registrar asking to block this activity. And for instance, if the law enforcement, it is very desirable to resort to the law enforcement to not to get the data about these hostings. Only the law enforcement agencies uh, may prevent the propagation of that uh, malware. If that's a reselling, then you have to understand that once we get certain data about certain server, who the owner of that server is, in case of a reselling, we would get the data of the owner of that server, the one who resells that server, not of the criminal who is using this capacity. A few words about the philosophy behind that. What we can do about that? First of all, what influence bulletproof hosting made on our cybersecurity? First of all, it revealed certain vulnerabilities on the internet, meaning that there are certain security problems there. Secondly, it uh, unleashed the criminals, giving them the feeling of security that they may approach some abuse-resistant housing and be totally safe and secure, that they will never be revealed. And it became a pain for security, cybersecurity specialists because they do not know what to do. Let's speak about countermeasures. What can be done in order to prevent that? How to uh, fight against uh, how to counter uh, these bad guys, first of all. You have to do the threat intelligence. You have to search the internet space. What uh, proof hostings may emerge there. You have to in investigate into the incidences. Sometimes, for some companies, it is enough to prevent some big damage and they are not interested in investigating into the incidents. Uh, they just want to cover certain losses, and that's it. What can be done in terms of the legislation? AS may be registered, and usually the proof hosting starts so with that. Also, we may make the who is rules more stringent so that who is could be trusted that for instance another address or phone number could be put there and the researchers uh, the investigators uh, would be confident that this is the real address also international interaction is important this is typical of a community as well if we share information about uh, bulletproof hostings were something like that, so then it would be much more convenient for everyone. But that's the philosophy, and this is about the pink ponies. It is not by accident that I put the pink pony next to international cooperation because this is very unlikely to take place. But what we do right now? At the conference, speaking of the conference, so we may develop methods to automate tracking of the bulletproof hostings. I told you about some manual things, but for instance, um, certain things could be automated. Moreover, <laughs> machine learning actually could be of some help. Next thing, the registration procedure. 
could be considered in order to make it more difficult to build and use bulletproof hostings. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. I have a question. How we can promote the philosophy of openness among the companies in the CIS countries in Russia? Uh, for instance, there is no official report. No one is actually complaining of the abuser DBD. No one says that um, it was attacked from certain AP address. No one asks to block it. So my question refers to the openness philosophy. Well, let me tell you from the outset that probably a lot of uh, personal connections are of help. If you cannot help change that globally, then probably you can use your personal ties, personal con connections. CERT member states, at least in the CS countries, are dealing with each other. If I remember correctly, Kyrgyzstan also has its own CERT, and you can deal with the Russian CERT. You can exchange information, you can publish certain information, and not necessarily it would be peer-to-peer -peer communication, but you can search some information, and uh, this is how you can bypass it. Good afternoon, and thank you so much for your report. I have the following question. Well, the people who are owning the AOs, and for instance, this might be homeless people who formerly would be registered as the owner with a whole kit of documents. And also you spoke about stricter rules. But have you discussed that with the community, anything like that? Not tribe only, but others as well. I do not see why, what we want to achieve. Do we want to understand what bulletproof hosting is about, how to work with that, or we want to address that problem 90%. I do not see the solution to that problem. And for instance, in Russia, you can find some technical, some technical person to get registered as the owner. If you remember my previous slide, the one before the last. That's an ideal world, uh, wishful thinking, and probably it won't work. And probably eventually, when the international cooperation is established, when we start discussing these things, we, as specialists, um, should learn, detect, and to investigate. That's the most important thing. As for AOs are concerned, actually, it might be registered at Seychelles, for instance. But, uh, for instance, uh, there was a case when this proved to be true. So there was a human factor, so something went wrong, probably. And this is how, actually, we could find him. And uh, a synth might be of some help, and we can use some uh, uh, indirect data in order to um, find these people. Thank you. Hi, everyone. What are you using in order to uh, 
get that information. Are you using Altiga? This is a very labor-intensive process. So automation could be used. How do you look for information about hosting? Are you using ITGO? There are lots of companies or different services which are uh, offering the big B data, not this one. Well, for instance, you found a, an address, then you found some uh, security, social security number, and that's it. Well, you may use uh, Whois console, where you actually uh, check the uh, Riper website, and you can use different parameters in order to look for that information. Thank you. That's a follow-up question. Where are you? Many operators given opportunity to, to hide the public uh, disclosing of uh, who is. So sometimes that information has been withheld privately. Private person and similar technologies work only for the domains, etc. Well, in essence, yes, but sometimes uh, it's been applicable for AS as well. For us, for the investigators, commercial investigators, uh, that it's difficult. We run into and uh, we cannot go further. But if the law enforcement does it, actually, they can go to RIPE and ask for the this confidential information. So I recommend to you to use um, official channels. Is it always that bulletproof hosting is a bane, is a curse? Are there cases that such hostings would be used as a boon for good? And another question is, can actually the state um, counter or combat such hostings? Any methods that probably could be used in order to make uh, more bulletproof hosting? Well, back to the first question. There were cases when the users, for instance, we would investigate into some hosting and we see that it is uh, disseminating a certain gibberish, and the law enforcement would uh, check that. Hosting would uh, uh, freeze all the hosts and servers and we'll see that uh, there is some good company, for instance, which is selling toys and uh, there is a porno website. So um, service might be used by different actors, good and bad. There were some hostings which actually work for the good. So there is a freedom hosting. I'm not sure whether this is no longer valid, so they stand up for the openness of internet. So they disseminate some political stories, etc. And so they're working for good. But how you can protect your hosting? Well, don't disseminate gibberish. You have to work for good and not for bad. So there are no practical tips. Sometimes they may catch you along with a big fish. Thank you so much. We'll have two quick questions. First, what are reasons to turn to the law enforcement? So certain crime has to take place to be committed in order to start a criminal case. Because you would just uh, react to these splashes, to these alarms, then probably all the people in the world would not be enough in order to start criminal investigations. And the second question is why you have not mentioned that show IPs could be filtered for the firewalls. If uh, certain resources are working with the Russian clients, then 
why not serving them only? Well, as for the first question is concerned, you have to understand what the last straw is, meaning the law enforcement cannot do everything. They cannot react full to all the alarms, for instance. They can react to any malware. As a rule, if the law enforcement does something, then they would check with the bulletproof hosting. They would go to that very rig, to that very cellar in order to arrest the hardware. So they would not just start an investigation for the sake of making sure that there is nothing mal malicious. Just acting as a community, we have to deal with each other. We have to communicate to one another. What, what was the second question? <laughs> Why haven't you mentioned uh, the recommendation to to do JYB filtration, meaning where we get the inquiry? This is how we can filter certain island nations. As for JYP filtration, uh, this is very much popular. And for instance, you cannot use your Russian IP in order to check Western news websites. That's about protection. There might be lots of recommendations. And I will not say that your IP is very much reliable. Most likely, this is actually trying to kill a fly with a spare wheel. But this is one of the options. Anyone else? Hi. I the following question. Let us imagine an abusing host from Malta. What would be the priority target for the geo investigator? You have certain tools and you can find the physical location of a hosting or you can identify the owner of that hosting. Once we don't have a silver bullet, well, this is a nesting doll. If you find the owner of the hosting, then most likely you would find some uh, indirect evidence to find the physical location of that hosting. But I'm fishing for words. For us, as for a commercial company, we follow what the customer instructs us. For law enforcement agencies, it is most important to, to find the criminal. But the client, if he tells us to find out what happened, uh, then we do that. But uh, for instance, if we fail to find the person who owns the hosting, we would tell the client so. But for instance, that's a team. You find one guy and you fail to find a hosting. So the hosting goes on working. Such stations are quite frequent, but you have to understand that a human factor would play some role there. It's much easier to find a person rather than a hardware because uh, a human being is vulnerable. This is like a domino effect. Well, actually, if uh, they work as a team, then actually we would find them all one by one within five years. Summing up what you have said, <laughs> the owner of such a hosting should not uh, actually make sure that he's anonymous, but uh, that the service is anonymous. Well, these things are integral, I think. This is just like a personal computer and social media. This is your work. And you have to have some uh, digital hygiene. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I have a question. Thank you so much for your report. I have the following question. Why not granting uplinks uh, of those bulletproof hostings. 
I mean that most of these bulletproof hostings are working through some legal proxies, meaning that they get connected through a legal uplink. So why not we delete these uplinks? Almost all the uplinks are major providers, and they do not need these problems, and they would react very harshly. And looking retrospectively, for instance, so there used to be RBN, and this is how it was destroyed. So uplinks were destroyed. And actually, it uh, faded away. They would move from the Russian S to Panama, then to somewhere else. But um, in essence, it was uh, hosted in Russia. Airbnb, this is a very good example of how actually you can kill a bulletproof hosting. You have to destroy the uplinks. This is one, a part of the solution. Every AS connection has a physical connection. Some payments, so it leaves traces. Well, this is one of the options. Why not? Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you gratify a question uh, that you like most? I liked the question about the Russian business networks, RBN. Russian business network. And that guy. And I think that this concludes my presentation. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. I will stick around, so you.